What? Oh, so I decided to hit record because it's okay. I think I'm on Patreon I'm talking, talking shit, right? So <laughs> sometimes that's good because, you know, that way I, you know, people can get the shit talk. They want shitting, you know, yeah. if you're into like, that, like your next film, Summer's B2, The Age of Feces. <laughs> it has to happen now, right? The origin of the feces, the descent of man. <laughs> yes. The scent of man. <laughs> with, with Al Pacino again. Okay. <laughs> he's Al older. Pacino and Cappuccino. He's, he's older and smellier now. <laughs> So I'm this working bathroom's on, out of order. I'm working on getting the uh, the the prologue because I forgot that. Okay. Um, well, I never made a link for this, did I? <laughs> I made a Zoom link, right? So you before did. I start the no, I just made it just now. Like I didn't make like I, that's my schedule book now, right? So mm -hmm. I well, don't, most I, people like don't send it in advance. It's kind of rare. Oh, okay. Like in like more than a few minutes. Like my therapist, we do um, Google Meet, and uh, I always get them from her like just minutes before, like two minutes before. That's so anxiety inducing, <laughs> isn't it? Right? It seems like <laughs> counterproductive or whatever. No, I do them like way ahead of time, just because I don't. I never write like anything down, so that really is my schedule book. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, that's the way it's supposed to work. Let's All see. right, let me dry off my teeth for this. That's cool. No, my my internet's being a. Oh, you can see it now. Uh, no, yeah, my, no, no. My internet's being an old farter. So I was staring at a. I was surprised I could still hear you. To be perfectly honest. <laughs> there we are, dude. <laughs> yeah. hua, hua, hua. That's for later, of course. I just bring. You know, it's kind of lame to bring it up while we're actually rolling the, rolling the freakage, right? Yes. No, it's 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 really more Jim Carrey. I'm still on that. That's more of a Jim Carrey thing. <laughs> no, it is. I mean, you know, what are you going to do? It's No, no lip is as good as the other no lip. What, what have I got lined up? I, th I think we're going to go for podcasting for Al Alien tr Attempt 3. <laughs> Attempt yeah. 1, I suddenly, was, oh, crap, that's actually Hannah's elementary graduation, right? So I did, you know, cancel. And then the next time, the lady that we're talking to, like, suddenly got COVID. So it was like busy calling everyone, you know, and like rearranging our life. So we had to like cancel that. So yeah. <laughs> snakes on a plane with a pilot. I hate snakes. I've never seen the movie. <laughs> oh, because he was like, how about snakes on a plane? Because like, oh, he's a, a pilot, right? So or at least aviation dude. So there's other stuff. I'm like, oh, well, I, I seem to remember Millennium having a plane. But then I was like, ah, oh, damn, I, we have to do snakes on a plane. Don't don't we? I just have to face. Yeah. Thing. Um, <laughs> I saw Millennium within the last three years. Oh, I haven't seen it since like, it was, you know, I rented it on VHS. <laughs> so yeah. I just remember there's a plane in it. But uh, I was like, I got to face my fear and do the snakes on the plane. Yeah. Turbulence 3 is actually a pretty good one, like for B movies. Oh, yeah. 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 That, that, that's, I mean, it, Snakes on a Plane isn't, it? I'll just be like, you know, a, a metal cylinder in the sky. That That's sci fi, right? Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, Snakes on a Plane, uh, that was a movie that the internet willed into existence, basically. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the little side. It's like a, what is it? Egregore. I think that's the, mm -hmm. uh, the monster we all create together with our subconsciouses yeah yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah and uh i've been i yeah I, I was like hey which twilight zone are we doing today i've been doing like a bunch of these recently so mm -hmm. <laughs> i just it's easy to get way ahead <laughs> weirdly <laughs> yeah well it's been a while since we talked about one of these true true and what do i have i think i have you on for well yeah we're do the after hours i'm going to try and get the uh Hopefully that'll that'll work out. So apparently I, I just discovered she's been the voice of Best Buy the past two years as well. So that's awesome. <laughs> Although I didn't know that because I don't see Best Buy commercials in Japan, do I? I well, I mean, I don't. <laughs> the only time I see commercials is YouTube. Yeah. Oh, they don't. They, mine are in Japanese. Well, you're in Japan. I mean, so makes... yeah, I'm just, I'm just saying like I, I, all of my YouTube commercials are like someone like screaming something suddenly at you in Japanese. 
there's one I was terrified because it's the queen of the queen of cellular coverage coverage or something. And there's one of the commercials where she just made the most annoying sound. And every time she comes up, I'm afraid it's going to be that one. <laughs> it's kind of this like it's like this it's like this huffing sound, but it's fake and it's like high pitched and it's horrible. See now I got to see this. Oh, I do. What's well, a YouTube commercial? I'm not even going to track that down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And next, next, I'll make a mental note of like specifically what it's covering next time it comes across. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll look it up. I'll find it. And I've been talking to everybody. Um, have you had a look at the, the motion picture director edition, Star Trek? Mm-mm, no. Uh, it's, it's, uh, they just started streaming it like a couple weeks ago on Paramount Plus, I guess, which I think I, you have yeah, been watching it. Yeah. Um, anyway, um, I've always been a theatrical cut fan. But mm-hmm. they, they finally did it right. Like all of the effects look like they're from the 70s, even if they have a digital enhancement. But the, mm-hmm. the, main, the main thing is they color timed it properly. Wow. So, so it looks like 60s Trek now. And Great. The, the effect sequences look like 2001 now. Cool. So when you're going, yeah, to I'll, have to, super, I'll have to watch trippy. that. Yeah. So um, they I didn't realize that was out. The only thing I caught that was a problem is they, you know, they re-edited things. If you've seen the theatrical cut, sometimes everyone's just standing around for two seconds before someone says something. Because it was basically <laughs> that weird a rough space cut. in it. Yeah. Because it was a rough cut, basically, right? They, they never finished the movie. And, uh, but um, so they, they tried to shore that stuff up. But there's a, what is it? It's, oh, it's when V'ger is sending its second blast to the Enterprise and uh, Kirk slowly starts to get really paranoid. Spock, now, <laughs> for some reason in the cut, he goes from like super chill and then you see Spock do something, and then he's freaking out. It's like, it's like, it's like that's a little, they, they kind of somehow edited out the buildup. <laughs> that's weird. Yeah. So, especially having seen that movie so many times, it was like, especially jarring. So, yeah. No, I, that's the thing. You've seen a lot of times, you know, every frame of it, you can tell when something, and plus something like that. <laughs> yeah. Cause you're like, that, that was a mistake. Somebody screwed up there. <laughs> yeah. Every, everything like... else in this is awesome, but someone screwed up. You, with the new color timing there's even like a red shirt uh when when spock is stealing the suit and neck pinches the guy it's 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 a maroon but it's like oh that's an actual red shirt which yeah. we, we we i always hated that there's no red shirts in that movie no one gets killed i guess but yeah <laughs> yeah but that's what red shirts do i know no one i don't think anyone dies in star trek the motion well the, the, okay unless you're on starbase or a klingon ship but as far as the enterprise crew there's just two two missing right yeah yeah <laughs> Um, I guess we'll get into this. So I'll do an okay. intro. Say, say, shut up for five seconds. I can spot it on the uh, sound file. Hey, welcome to Time Enough Podcast. It's where we talk about episodes of the Twilight Zone and beyond. This is Matt here. Joining me today is legend of screen and stage, Delroy Lindo. Hello, Delroy. Hello. That doesn't sound like Delroy. Oh, it's Andrew. Hi, Andrew. Hi. Well, you know, I'm not going to try to do some kind of black person. No, I know. No, I know that. I just, uh, I just, that like right before he started recording, his name just popped in my head and it it won't leave. Um, I mean, I like Delroy Lindo. He's great. I don't, yeah. I just, I hadn't thought about him for 10 years and he suddenly came back to mind. That's why. Cause he's, I hope he's doing, I hope he's doing shorty. I looked him up on wiki. He is. Okay. (laughs) Because I, I was like, what, what, what? I, mean, I needed to make sure I knew which movies he was. So um, I guess the. Yeah, yeah, no, I haven't seen him in anything in a, um, in a get long, sh- while. But... Get, get Shorty, uh, Malcolm X, great stuff. I don't know. He just popped in my head. So I thought I'd shout it out. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> One of the best names ever. <laughs> no, I agree. I agree. No, I, I, I could do a little bit of Fred Sanford, but that would be pushing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm not, I was, you know, the impression I want for this show which you've were pre-drying your teeth for so <laughs> yeah if if no one has ever heard this before um when i do the introduction i like to try and do it as rod serling and to do that i got to dry my teeth because serling appears to have uh no upper lip right <laughs> Although I still think it's a Jim Carrey impression. When I hear it, it's it's cool. You know, I'm just like, I'm oh always, no, this is... I'm always yeah seeing. Yeah, it. if you're seeing it, then yeah. Fire Marshal Bill, Bob Bill, which is the Fire Marshal Bill. 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 Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> These are hard to say when you have no upper lip. 
so today it's nightmare as a child which i um i was like yeah i, I for some reason i was coming in thinking we were going to get some weird like elm street precursor nope yeah definitely not not at all but uh nope. that, that's that's just the expectation i had uh this is one sometimes like i've seen it or i've seen it or i haven't seen it before i did watch this one like several times uh leading up to here but um i'm not sure if i've seen it before maybe i did maybe i didn't so we'll, we'll get into that but while, while you're drying your teeth i'll read the trivia so it's a rod serling teleplay jerry goldsmith's score looks like we're working off a full cylinder twilight zone template with those guys in here uh helen foley played janice rule while she scored did i get that backwards no janice rules the actress oh god yeah uh, janice rule plays helen foley yeah, yeah, I wrote it backwards. Okay, Janice Rule plays Helen Foley. While she scored plenty of TV and film work, it seems that her career was defined by roles she almost got, but she showed them all by getting a PhD and becoming a psychoanalyst for almost three decades before passing on in 2003. Marky was played by Terry Burnham. No info whatsoever, so I guess this was the 15 minutes of fame, but that ghost child certainly burns in your brain. Uh, <laughs> Shepard Strudwick was Peter Selden. There's nothing in his career to light your fancy on fire, but he did find his way into plenty of B-list Hollywood pot boilers and some TV westerns. I, I'm just guessing the casting director of the Twilight Zone was, you know, like a walk in the Spawn Ranch or something while it was, you know, still, still kicking. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that has to be the, I mean, or the other ranches, but you know, if you're going to name a ranch, right. I was going to say that's, that's always at the top. <laughs> right. Well, that's the thing it would, at this point, it would have been like fully functional, right? Yeah. Like as a, a somewhat normal person place, if we're going to consider. Yeah. It wasn't yet known for what it's known for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, okay. You were drying your teeth. Let me bring up we're, the fang for you. We're all set here. Okay. And yeah, we oh, old man computers thinking again. Yeah, here we go. All right, month of November, hot chocolate in a small cameo of a child's face, imperfect only in its solemnity. These are the improbable ingredients to a human emotion. The emotions say like fear, but in a moment, this woman. Ellen Foley will realize fear. She will understand what are the properties of dare. The little girl will lead her by the hand and walk with her to a <laughs> I can't even do the last sound. Lip came loose, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like Rod's doing his jaw comes loose. <laughs> the glue it with oval team. <laughs> yes. Um yeah, so this is this was one of your your personal requests. Like, I have to have this episode, so I'll, yeah. I'll bounce the ball in your court. Okay, so Nightmare as a Child is not one of the most well liked Twilight Zone episodes, and the reason it's not well liked is the reason why I like it, <laughs> um, because uh, it is fairly realistic. There's not a whole lot of Twilight Zoney kind of weird fantasy about it um this is a story about repressed memory and um helen is that her name uh yes okay Sorry, so I, helen, I, I gummed that up didn't i <laughs> no that's okay helen uh, <laughs> you made me doubt my own memory helen the character um i really like the performance and um this is a i think serling actually named her after one of his school teachers if I can remember the trivia correctly. But um, so she encounters what we learn fairly early on is her childhood self, like a projection of her childhood self. And there's a scene where she sees a photo of herself as a child that's given to her by Peter, who's the creep of the story. And um, it's, it's like, okay, number one, why would, that, why would you even have that? That's kind of gross. But two... That moment would ordinarily be, and correct me if I'm wrong, that would be like the gotcha, the shock moment where she realizes, oh, that was me. But this episode doesn't like 
care about you know the big reveal it's more of like oh crap how do i get away from this guy who has been looking for me because he murdered my mom and he wants to murder the only witness to that crime which is me it's a pretty straight up and down like suspense tale really but um for that reason some people yeah a lot of a lot of people i have spoken to and and uh you know and books that i've read too yeah they they just think this is a they don't really like it for that reason mm-hmm. but i really i really enjoy it because the the expectation of a twilight zone episode having to be structured a certain way there's no way a writer could consistently want to like a writer like serling could consistently want to work within that framework you know and there are episodes in other seasons and as things progressed where i mean they are like little movies they don't um follow the they, they couldn't have done it so i i just think because that first season is seen as this like really perfect thing um with a couple of different but there's episodes that i feel are realistic that people really like um one that you and i actually did um the where's everybody right and then the silence coming up uh in the second season definitely is uh, there's nothing nothing supernatural in that one (laughs) yes it's weird but there's nothing supernatural (laughs) as someone who loves short form storytelling and someone who is one who does make short films Nightmare as a Child is like to me just perfect. I don't think there's, I mean, there's stuff that's odd, but you can't if you're watching it expecting it to be Twilight Zoney, um, then you're gonna right away you're gonna know what the ending is. You're gonna go, oh, that's her, and then you're just gonna be like, why are? Well, why they is just this get not a, they get that out of the way pretty quickly because it's relatively obvious. Yeah. <laughs> And in, in fact, when she's still like not 100% that that guy's the murderer, he comes back and he's like, okay, so I'm the murderer. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I guess he wanted to get rid of the last witnesses thing, but my note was he didn't really need to come back. That's a bit of a Mac- MacGuffin there. <laughs> no, so, I mean, I've heard plenty of criticisms about, and I do understand, um, you know, the, the trouble people have with it and their issues could be, uh, completely different than than what uh you know have nothing to do with what i'm talking about but um i yeah i i think my uh is the kid annoying i no, i think the kid fits in that um you know the the realm of the bad seed or the mm-hmm. the, the twins and the shining or or the later twilight zones talky tina yeah, yeah. <laughs> so i i felt like she's in that mold yeah she doesn't ham it up you know, it's kind of it's kind of interesting that she didn't go on to do a lot of other things. And some of the ones that are famous for having a similar performances that are a little more kind of over the top, a little cornier, uh, were the ones that kind of went on to do other things. And so, uh, yeah, I, I don't have a I don't have an issue with any of this in terms of casting or in terms of writing. And I no, I actually expected to find some information on on the the girl that was playing the role and nothing. Yeah. So except the name. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, so that was kind of a ramble, but uh, I just, yeah, this is seen as one of the ones that, uh, I guess a lesser episode or one that kind of didn't work. And I can't help but think that that opinion is just influenced by what they consider to be, you know, people get an idea of what's a Twilight Zone episode and what's not. And uh, I don't think that's really fair to the overall thing that Sterling was trying to do, which was write really good short stories. Yeah, I'm sure Janice Rule is just taking a job here, but it is interesting that she did end up becoming a psycho analyst considering this episode. <laughs> I didn't know that. That was really wild. <laughs> I mean, well, it seems like that was her real profession. Like acting was like her lark as a young lady. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, you know, as far as the Helen character is concerned, um, you know, like repressed memory is very real. And having uh, an external advocate like that, so you're taking something that happens in the in the mind. This is a thing that's not always translated well. You know, when you read a story, and a lot of it happens in the character's head, and so you're like, how would they film that properly? Because you know, <laughs> it's got the uh, the unreliable narrator. And so I think having it be in the form of a person, kid or not, um, I think it was a great device. And I think even though it's not supernatural, it is weird. Yeah, yeah. 
Now the the twist that never does get explained is how how her hair darkened that much, but I guess there's dyes. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say she went from like the, the the blonde to maybe like a sandy blonde, and then it wouldn't behave, so she started high, high uh, flat ironing it, and then she just went for the dye because she started going a little gray. Yeah, it's the fifties, sixties. <laughs> That's what I, happened. I we're at the point where I'm not quite sure if it's. I guess I guess 1960 is still considered part of the 50s. Yes, very yeah. much so. Although yes. you you can get into arguments about that with people for sure. Mm. <laughs> you don't think 1980 was the 70s, basically? Hmm. Well, it, the argument I recently heard is: well, if we consider 1980 part of the 70s, then Galactica 80 still fits squarely into 70s sci-fi. <laughs> I mean, where's the problem? Yeah. So I don't know. I, I I think we should the years that end with zero should get like like left out of decades. That should be like that's the transition year. It is. Yeah. That, like, that's that's how I see it. You know, when I think of American cinema 1969, I lump a lot of 70 and even a little 71 in there. Yeah. Well, there's always the idea that there's like a, def you know, the defining event of that, that really kicks the decade off. You know, like the idea of the 60s didn't really start till Kennedy shot and the Beatles show up. Very true. Before that, it's still the 50s. So, <laughs> okay. Well, in our, where did the 90s start? We were, we were there for the 90s. Uh, 91, I would say. No, I mean, what event made it? Oh, like, what, oh, what, really a, what event? Yeah, I, I remember the New Year's show uh, introduced us to the Lombada, but I don't think that's big enough. <laughs> no. <laughs> the 2000s, well, that's probably 9-11, okay. Uh. <laughs> yeah, no, I, gosh, the 90s. It wasn't a, I don't feel like it was a pop culture event. It was a, maybe the Gulf War. Okay, that might, yeah, yeah. I don't, I, although we got the Portlandia dream of the 90s, that's that's certainly, a, that's more of a modern flavor, right? <laughs> yeah, I that, love that's, that. why, that's why it's so funny, because, you know, in the late 90s, everyone's like, oh, everything's hip now. <laughs> History's over, as as um, the, the, the one writer said, uh, Francis Fukuyama, yeah. History's over, everyone. We can just yeah. chill now. That worked out well. <laughs> Yeah, no, <laughs> we are, history was not quite done with us. <laughs> uh, what do you think of the guy, though, that plays Peter? Like, this is my thing when it comes to villains and, and people you're not supposed to initially suspect of anything uh, sinister. Um, did you, from the moment he showed up, which was randomly, um, did you, were you like kind of what were you thinking about him were you like oh this is the guy well uh my first that is note, all in the casting and you know in the direction but my first note on that is i keep hearing peter sellers but he's no peter sellers selden so i had to get past the name first because i was hearing peter sellers and then <laughs> uh, again i came in like half thinking about nightmare on elm street coming in so my note is i would just assume freddy krueger had offed mom him or peter selden <laughs> <laughs> so uh, i guess i picked that up pretty quickly <laughs> although i when i was doing the notes i guess it was probably my second view so um yeah as far as my first view um i'm not quite sure honestly my first view is probably i watched it at 1 30 in the morning fell asleep 10 minutes in and woke up what was going on there? that happens a lot i watch anthology shows and fall asleep in the middle and wake up the next morning I'm like hey, what happened there <laughs> okay well um what do you think of the device where they that they use to actually visualize the murder when she starts to kind of remember things that's that's not what I, okay uh recognize past me I'm, I'm i'm looking specifically on my notes for that because it didn't stick in my head that that's where we have the creepy children's song is it mm -hmm. world of creepy children's music okay yes yes yeah so the, the coco still was not drunk because it was a ghost <laughs> at that point, at that point, yeah, I'm right here. Foley, Foley could probably use a therapist. Pro maybe, maybe Janice Rule could do that for her. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that is that is that the kind of like stylish effect sequence of this episode? Mm -hmm. yeah. It didn't stick. It didn't stick for me. All the other stuff in this episode stuck because hmm. I 
um, especially, uh, like I said, I've been doing several episodes in the past few weeks, and I've really kind of like doubled down on searching for that little analog effect they do or something. And in this episode, it didn't really stick then. Ah, interesting. I, I think the reason why is because it's subtle. And I think that um, making it kind of over the top hokey or too uh, visually interesting would probably not fit the realistic tone that it has. Because, yeah. you know, that was a thing. And I think this is so smart for the time period that it was made. I don't think they really do. I mean, having her talking to her childhood self, um, that I guess could mislead the audience into thinking maybe she doesn't remember what she thinks she remembers or what happened might not have happened kind of a thing. Mm. But I never thought that. I believed her, you know, 100% of the time. Okay, that, that's something I never thought that she was having a wrong memory. Okay. That never occurred to me. I, I was like, oh, this is the repressed memory. I'm not like she's imagining it. So Right, but you've seen stuff where they do that, mm. where, you know, they they make you sort of not trust, uh, or the, the woman kind of doesn't trust it, and the audience, they do things visually that make the audience not trust her memory. Like, oh, no, she killed her mom. Da, da, da. <laughs> I guess that is that little edge to the, the Twilight Zone where it is a bit, uh, you know, ahead of the feminist movement because the women in the Twilight Zone are usually like they're not wrong. <laughs> they, you know, I mean, I'm sure there's a few a few liars somewhere in here, but generally they're not wrong. They've just found themselves in the worst and or bizarre situations. Yeah, no. And that's that's a really good observation. And it's one of the reasons why it still works for me as a show because you can watch it and even though it's old um they the decisions that they make aren't from a place of like i don't know well let's just say you know just some good old fashioned sexism mm -hmm. where you know serling would be like uh they're all either idiots or backstabbers <laughs> he would have put that in the prologue if, I, if he meant that cuz he he <laughs> likes to put these characters on the nose <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i no I, I never really thought she was i never thought of her as the um was it the not what's that, the observer the not inaccurate there's a better word for that unreliable narrator yes thank you that's what i was going for <laughs> so but yeah i am thinking more and more like i came in oh i, I was thinking elm street and it didn't have that at all but actually there is a quite a bit of overlap because you've got nancy and elm street like not quite remembering this weird event from her childhood where, where in this case all the parents went off to to off freddy you know mm -hmm. selden's kind of like a, a cut rate you know non-burned freddy in a way yeah <laughs> although and, and you know mom eats it at the end of elm street as well so <laughs> like oh, no. now i'm like there actually are some parallels here so <laughs> yeah no that, uh, that's pretty sure i'll take any elm street reference uh, you know like if even if we have to shoehorn it to make it work I'll although i do i do have to temper that with the west craven didn't see movies until he was like 21 or 22 so this probably was not an influence but no no <laughs> but, uh, but i mean what do they say there's only like a few different types of stories out there oh yeah uh, so the, I, I was like yeah the, the archetype still actually kind of applies so i was like oh that actually does kind of work so amazing <laughs> yeah no there's been i mean there's there's been plenty of movies where I felt like, you know, it was pretty much the heir apparent to Nightmare on Elm Street or, you know, told that story well in a different way to modernize it. But it's it's neat to see that and go back there. But thinking of, of Peter as, as Freddy is an interesting thing because until your notes, it didn't really occur to me. Um, because uh, Freddy is always bad, but you're supposed to buy Peter as someone who this woman with a tra traumatized past would just let in the door. Right. <laughs> but if Freddie wasn't all burnt up, you know, it'd be like, hell, you wear the sweater around, right? <laughs> I do. I do wear the sweater around. And, and I like some people, I feel like, look at me because they're like, does he know? Nah. Because Old Navy sells what they call a rugby sweater that looks a lot like Freddie's sweater. And I've seen people walking around in it and I'm like, poser. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just got my... uh. My 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 Kurt Cobain T-shirt, which has the the black and red stripes, right? <laughs> yeah, but not not quite the same. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's true. I always wanted a Nightmare on Elm Street prequel. I hope in my lifetime they'll do it. I know those copyrights kind of they do lapse unless they create a new something from it. That's right. why every every now and then another 
chainsaw massacre or uh, friday the 13th shows up you're like yeah we gotta keep that character <laughs> oh yeah that's that's the um the the it's where the 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 gauntlet for spider-man isn't it <laughs> oh god yeah that's like <laughs> the example yeah really um yeah i guess see coming out of the episode i was like what what was the big like kind of like effecty or the the that moment and i was like well they had him falling down the stairs as a stunt and it was a pretty steep staircase <laughs> no next time you see it they they do they do do a cool visual of um of her like sort of vaguely remembering but it's all like in silhouette you know right no no that yeah that did like it just it was i guess it was narratively solid enough i wasn't even thinking about mm -hmm. it as an effect you know it's like i remember it happening i just wasn't like oh here's the, the no I, I think it would have been a detrimental to the tone the realism of that if they'd gone any other way with it like it was, it's like just enough right now, is this does this have does this dovetail with your volunteering stuff pretty accurately or um I mean yeah because um you know we all had a set of and our our host is referring to my time as a volunteer at the rape crisis center. So you had to learn like there is a set of like really basic rules and they're easy to remember because it's common sense. But the first one is if someone tells you something, you got to believe them that it happened. You can't just be like, are you sure? Or, you know, were you drunk or whatever else? You know, you got to you got to believe what they say, because that's a big reason why people don't come forward when something bad has happened. Either it's been done to them or they've seen it happen uh, with trauma. They um, the, the fear of not being believed uh, and the fear is real because a lot of times it's not. And so, yeah. No, that's a good question. I really do. I really do think so. And uh, it's it's progressive in that way because they don't uh, they don't try to discredit her. Um, the main point of the show even is not the fact that she doesn't remember, but the fact that she's then got to get away from this guy. <laughs> right, right. That's the thing. There's yeah, it's never like, oh, you know, you're just seeing it wrong because um, mm -hmm. I guess that's. Um, you know, as we're doing this, the, the second season of Star Trek Picard's airing and, and, and with Picard as the boy, and they kind of have the opposite thing where he did remember it wrong. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think the nightmare as a child, um, which, you know, you, I, I did, I compared it earlier to where's everybody in the, in the, in, uh, in terms of like realism, but I really think this one is more of like a, an Alfred Hitchcock presents kind of a story yeah i can see that for sure because yeah. yeah it is more it's more it's way more suspense than paranormal the only paranormal is, thing you've is got you've got your girl yeah your young woman um kind of protagonist there and the, yeah i just think that um yeah it, it's more in line with maybe something that uh, hitchcock would have done but again that's why serling is so great he could have written that stuff if he wanted to more often well, than he did did in the 50s <laughs> yeah that, yeah, that I meant for, the, that, for this series. Well, that was the whole thing when he started. People were like, are you nuts? You want to do sci-fi? That doesn't make any sense. Because <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't the thing at the time. I mean, that wasn't the prestige thing at the time. I mean, it's like either I'm crazy or I got both my lips. <laughs> Sorry, now I'm, I'm trying to think about lips more. Maybe he, was a, <laughs> he could have been a fish. I don't know. That, that's the twist. He was actually a fish. <laughs> they talk about in the distant past, you know, the, the Af in Africa, the Dogon have the, the intelligent fish man coming. Maybe that's where Serling came from. That's why he doesn't have I mean, it's <laughs> <laughs> Those guys had the handbags that you see in the carvings and things. Serling yeah. had a cigarette. <laughs> I'm glad we're having this discussion during season one. <laughs> Just getting this out of the way. Yeah, he's barely on screen yet. <laughs> poor guy <laughs> but uh, yeah no i do i do uh, admire him uh, but you know we poke fun just because you know he hey what's wrong with being a secret chief fish god that's awesome yeah no i it's twilight zoney enough for me yeah right on uh <laughs> let's let's do some questions in this episode okay. So who, if anybody, went into the Twilight Zone? Sorry, I loaded the question a touch. <laughs> no, I was ready for this one. 
I think I think Peter went to the Twilight Zone. Okay, explain. I think I think that because um, Helen will now. It could be argued that she was perhaps one foot in, one foot out throughout her life after this trauma that she experienced. Um, Peter, however, yeah, he went down the freaking stairs and he's <laughs> dead. <laughs> See, the, as I say, I front loaded question because I'm thinking, like you said, it's not a typical Twilight Zone. I'm like, well, nobody did in this episode. <laughs> you think nobody did? Yeah. For that cause... reason? Well, yeah, I mean, like you said, that's just the thriller thing. That's just, I mean, he, you know, that he pretty on a, on a, on any level, he deserved to go, well, not deserve, but well, he did deserve, but okay. He went down the stairs and it's fine. Let's put it that way. <laughs> it's more like an Alfred Hitchcock thing. Like you said, went down the stairs and it's fine. <laughs> I mean, I get it. It's, yeah. it's, it's the, the justice system of the, the episode is, has been, completely like meted out or whatever it's fine it's, but but I, it's, it's hitchcock's justice system right it's not the twilight zone's justice system i guess so and, but i want and, someone to go to the twilight zone and i like the idea that they fell down the stairs to get yeah. there and like you said marky is basically just uh externalization of an inner dialogue or what's going on in her mind which you know she's confronting herself but not i mean you I mean, you could think about young you and have a conversation in your mind uh you know you're doing that and i guess she didn't but yeah, I, I guess that's the thing about repressed memory. It's probably not going to come in a conscious way, right? Yeah, uh, I'm thinking of other episodes where people encounter their young selves because that's a that's definitely a Twilight Zone trope. We have walking um, distance for we we did right, and that's a very different take. That's a you know like like you said, the guy's a, a bull in a china shop. As far as was his God that episode, uh, <laughs> he just like hey everybody. Where um, Helen's having, you know, she's by herself, basically thinking, and we're seeing it, you know, like That's, the way it's presented is Twilight Zoney, but what's happening isn't particularly. Yeah, no, that's the thing. Uh, and that's, again, why a lot of people don't like it, but I do. That's not a character. That's not her seeing, you know, encountering her past self. This is a convers conversation that's going on in her mind that we're just, you have to have a way to show it. and. I just think that's a brilliant choice. So I'm, I'm going with nobody. You're going with Peter. So <laughs> see, that, that's why I was stumbling over my words, because now the question is, did Peter deserve it? And I guess we've already done that. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, <laughs> an eye for an eye, right? I mean, this archaic justice system or whatever. It's like, uh, you know, he's he's the one that murdered, so he can't get away. And you don't want um, Helen to be murdered because God, that sucks on top of everything else. Yeah. So this is this I, is I closure get, for the suspense story. I guess we can call it self defense as opposed to a death penalty. So. Oh yeah, no, because <laughs> he was he was there to to clean the mess up that he started. You know, well, like but, I like I was saying, I, I've been doing a few of these this week, and last night was execution, which so you know it's a very. <laughs> different relief to this episode as far as that's concerned yeah i love execution <laughs> um tripometer zero to five trip it out oh man i mean this is a low one i know i'm just, i'm just kind of really kind of reaching to find what i consider would be the the trip part um i guess it would be the fact that we're seeing her talk to her younger self and it's not the way it normally happens in twilight zone yeah I guess so that's the a presentation I, I would maybe a, maybe a two that's, that's pushing it that's where i'm sitting um yeah like, like i watched i did watch this episode like incomplete like i it, like it, it was complete not incomplete i watched it incomplete maybe twice and i watched it for realsies like three times and i was still like oh i think you need to what exactly did that segment look like so it just if that had really burrowed in my brain more, it probably would have upped the score. But um, yeah, well, I mean, that's going to happen. Like, you know, when I marathon them um, and uh, if I'm watching them on TV, they're not in order, but they don't tend to play this one. Mm. So I just go with now that you can watch them in order with the discs I do. And, uh, uh, you know, this is, uh, I don't know, it really breaks things up really well, but I can't say if someone's watching them all back to back, like kind of you tend to do, I don't know that mm -hmm. that particular element would stand out. And people say this one doesn't. That's like another reason why it, 
No, what like sticks it. in my mind is her in her kitchen talking to little Marky and her in her kitchen dealing with Peter Selden. And th that's cracking. That has good dialogue, a good tone, good suspense tones in both cases. That's cool. So if, if, we, if we had the suspenso meter, it'd be a higher rating, you know? <laughs> I, yeah, no, I agree. Because there's no, is this happening? <laughs> but this I thought, yeah, as far as dialogue and like, you know, what to think about in this episode, I mean, it's certainly solid. So <laughs> I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be a hater on this one in those regards, but yeah, no, when I was a kid watching it, um, I saw it a couple of, you know, occasionally and I didn't feel that it was that strong, but as I, you know, grew to, I was a fan of the show and then, um, I, re I would say I really started to kind of find my way into appreciating it when the um, when I got the set, you know, because mm. oftentimes I would I would go in and watch the ones I didn't remember very well. Mm. Well, again, that's the whole point because of uh, this podcast in a way, because I'm yeah. like, well, I got the set. The only way I'm going to watch. That's the only way I'm going to ensure that I watch all of these. <laughs> uh, I love just playing it from the beginning. Take me, you know, several days to get through it all. But I love just starting it up like that. Yeah, I just, I never, you know, like, I never just sit down and, like, stare at, it, at the TV anymore for, like, hours at a time, so. Oh, no, I mean, I, yeah. I'll i have it on the in the background while I'm working, things like that, uh, so. Yeah, yeah, but, no, I, you know, what I'm watching is basically what I'm podcasting, so I'm like, well, I really want to watch this, so. <laughs> Solution. <laughs> yeah, it's a good way to see the whole series. That's a good idea. But, uh, so what's up, what's up in your, your area of the. The creative park of existence. Okay, so Gonzorific, G O O G O N Z O R I F F I C. This is the movies that my friends and I make. We're currently in post production on a movie called Jugsaw, like jigsaw, except for breast. So um, I'm expecting that to be out. Um, do the, so the breast cut off people's arms and stuff? Oh, wait, do you see what they do? <laughs> um, very excited because for the Jugsaw um, uh, portions of the film, which is mixtape like all of our other physical releases, it's got several other movies on it. Um, the score for Jugsaw is a collaboration between Claire Campbell and Bridget Heron from Tuna Bunny. Uh, Claire plays the saw. This is all her idea. <laughs> and, it's, and and Bridget uses it as the vocal, and so she did the um, she did the score for underneath it, and it is really creepy. <laughs> it is really <laughs> creepy. And so, and uh, but yeah, uh, your the way I use your music in um, haunted hotcakes, I think, um, is really wonderful. So um, I'll I'll let everyone know when that comes out because it was that one is kind of like a there's a lot of throwbackness to it so i went and found a lot of your old music and it kind of goes in order of old to new all righty this one is time enough podcast it's on twitter it's on facebook at time enough podcast it's under the podcasting umbrella on patreon of podcastio podcastius where you talk about sci-fi films and matt and luke sci-fi sanctuary whatever in oral hygiene <laughs> <laughs> and and there's uh some some folks talking about games luke loves pokemon and he'll talk about one each week uh some monster hunter and the game game show which is a game show about games so you can get into that one if you want to and <laughs> and yeah for now i guess uh, you, you can go go talk to little andy in the back of the room there waiting outside on the steps <laughs> yeah he's gonna he's trying to warn me about some of the girls that i dated but of course i'm not gonna listen <laughs> i guess i'll hit hit it stop there i just so, i'm i'm just leaving things i mean if you're like hey i want to say something i want on air but yeah i was like i should leave a little bit more on the the patreon feed than just the guff so i'm like oh hmm. stop it when i when i stop talking i guess but <laughs> Yeah, Luke liked something I posted on Facebook for the very first time. Ah, I never like anything on Facebook, by the way. You probably picked up on I'll I'll comment, but I, I'll never like. Well, that's the thing, though. You kind of get a feel for the way people use it. And uh, I was like, oh, Luke, Luke's interested <laughs> in the, the North man. Yeah, he stays off of social media for the most part. That was his New Year's resolution a year ago. Never. To I scroll. remember that. Yeah, Which is, no, it's. I, 
you know, that's no longer his, his, he tasked himself, but yeah, I, I, you know, you do that for a year and you're going to stay off social media a little more. Yeah, no, I, uh, unfortunately, as long as I work for the news media, um, (laughs) I'm going to be on it for the foreseeable future. No, that Facebook's basically like promotional tool and communication tool. Cause you know, like I talked to you, it's way easier than trying to do a email conversation so no yeah no it's just to me that and instagram and twitter it's like a a conversation that was started years ago that just every single you know what i mean it's just every day it that's the only way i can think of it for myself so i don't go what am i doing my life (laughs) It's like, it's weird for getting guests because Luke seems to be quite good at getting guests through Twitter, whereas I've never gotten a guest through Twitter. Instagram, <laughs> I don't, I, I've had some run-ins and that never solidified. Like I've had a few people that seemed interested and it never gelled with Instagram. Hmm. Um, and, and then weirdly, Facebook's a big hit. I've gotten, a, I, you would think that would be like the, you know, the trash heap of the internet, but I've gotten quite a few guests through Facebook. And, and yeah, just, direct- and just straight emails of course but uh yeah 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 no i um i'd say you know the cinema file podcast um i could have way more guests than i do going through publicists and things like that Mm. um but instead i really like to try to organically make it i don't know it just ends up feeling a little bit more personal um when you've reached out directly to the yeah yeah and then with the Trekkie crowd, I'm on, on the Discord, right? So mm-hmm. I can just get through, send them through a Discord. You know, even if you end up arranging it through email, it seems a little more solid because you're in like a kind of gated community, I guess. So it's not just some, not just some Yahoo off the street. Yeah. Um, do you listen to the Broken Record podcast that uh, Rick Rubin does? No. Uh, it has really good new interviews with the guys from the Chili Peppers. And um, the flea one, not not the, the not the new flea one, but there's one from when his book came out that's like in front of a live audience. And he does this thing where he goes through the evolution of his bass playing. And so he gives an example of like some early songs that he and Hillel Slovak had in their first band. And it's like it's just a trip. And I don't <laughs> know anybody else that might be interested in that, but it's man, like- it was cool like the doctor strange love thing where peter sellers is doing the accents around the british isle <laughs> have you seen that yeah but <laughs> <laughs> i didn't think of that <laughs> Just hearing that but yeah the john frushanti episode is also really great um because he uh you know with him talking to to rick rubin it's that that line of questioning is from someone that has actually known him for so long you know mm-hmm. So to hear him talk about sort of his, I don't know, I found his his creative process to be weirdly similar to the way we always did things, <laughs> which is, you know, not not being afraid for it to sort of just like fizzle and die. And, yeah. you know, every I mean, weird idea is worth exploring. Yeah, I mean, you know, I write songs completely different now, but that's what I did as teenagers, play till it sounds like something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was just, I would just, I didn't, you know, he's he's the one I know the least about because he's never written a book <laughs> yeah because i remember we were like who wrote the song we're not sure <laughs> we couldn't quite figure out who wrote half the songs which yeah, makes no. sense so yeah that's cool but uh i'm looking at the podcast i listen to when they have a director i like i'll listen to the blank check one they're on Ramy now so i am listening to theirs now yeah a couple of the uh a couple classical music podcasts because i'm a quirk sniffer all, all the mission log stuff um a couple whack you know, like mystics and weird conspiracy podcasts, uh, cryptids and shit, right? So that's what I'm usually yeah. listening to. I actually have been listening to the Game Game Show one. So <laughs> I was gonna say I have a subscription to, um, you know, the the ones I don't listen to the ones that I'm on, but I tend to listen to the, you know, listen hearing everybody else, uh, hearing Mark. I I didn't even know what Mark looked like anymore. Like if I'd recognize him if I saw him, I haven't seen him in so long. So you, are you there if you really want to see go on the YouTube? <laughs> you know, yeah, that's what I, that's yeah. what I'm saying. I always, if there's a YouTube version, that's what I do. Right. So I am thinking of drafting, like oral hygiene. I'm kind of thinking of just when I feel like it. Status. Yeah. 
Uh, no, although, but see that that funky monks though that was the, like the longest one we've ever done yeah yeah well that you and i have ever done that's right but uh yeah. recently i can really chill on that because i got the garth Marenghi ones which are were recorded like two months ago so yeah, <laughs> um, yeah no but, i'd rather it be that than having to feel like obligated to find things you know? yeah well i'm just i'm just thinking of, i've I, you know i got i'm eyeing would like the twilight zone i'm like eyeing the sets on my shelf over here and thinking maybe i should do one of those so um yeah. i'm what am i looking at the, the prisoner space 1999 uh those are both you know the the buck rogers tv show of course um yeah yeah so stuff like that is kind of i'm thinking about hitting one of those i, I might hit the prisoner because uh you know sci-fi ones i might be able to get like like as a kind of an audition sort of thing for people so <laughs> yeah yeah and plus the you know the prisoners the prisoner right so i was thinking of grabbing him and doing the prisoner and not asking him to do the oral so much but yeah although i, I you know I, recently as you've seen that one's kind of shifted into more of like just doing whack caught film so that's kind of fun too so well that's i mean that's <laughs> that's what i'm into Right, that makes more sense for a podcast, really. I mean, you know, it's cool to throw in the educational ones as well, but it well, is weird had, that we feel. I feel like we covered all like the big ones. Oh, I could always find some more. There's that. That's a pretty endless pit. But, is it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I know we didn't want to keep doing like the car safety ones and the occupational safety ones. But yeah, this year, as you may have noticed, it's been a little more caught film oriented. Mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> yeah and yeah and the the garth thing that was because that was my idea when i was thinking look at eyeing my shelf first I, one and done i'll do tv series that were only on for one season <laughs> yeah that's not a bad idea yeah so the prisoner i could do do it sci like if i do that i'm still non-committal it could be sci-fi series because it's kind of a sci-fi series it's a one season series so that yeah. idea still sticks so i can just do it as a prisoner then rebrand the feed if i depending on how i want to take it <laughs> yeah no that would a lot of people do that you know? right the gears kind of shift well like the blank check one the first couple of years it was specifically we're like laser focusing on every aspect of the star wars prequels which is <laughs> kind of an insane concept i never went i've never gone that far back in their episode list to see that is that what they did yeah so they, they would like just talk about like the, you know, like Jar Jar's people for like an hour. Oh, my. <laughs> you know, you consider yourself a Star Wars fan until you realize that that type of stuff is out there. And you're like, OK, there's <laughs> levels to this. Yeah. No, I never listened to those like laser specific episodes because later, later they did just do like movie specific ones. I, I did play those. But yeah, mm. I don't I don't want to hear about those guys for an hour <laughs> I don't care no, what are you much. what are you really going to retain from that you know yeah no i just brought it because i was like eh, you're probably i imagine since they're doing since they just did the, all the evil dead films you might have had your ear on that <laughs> no uh you know it's funny i don't watch the evil deads anymore uh since the the um the new one came out the evil mm. uh, the evil dead uh, i guess you know i guess they called it a remake but it's really just a it is a way better version. It's a way better movie than any of the Evil Dead's are. Yeah, like I'm sick of Bruce Campbell. Like I'm tired of <laughs> Ash. I, Ash was never like once I got over that initial teenage thing mm. of of Ash Williams, like that Ash versus Evil Dead series. That would have been like a dream for me if I was like maybe you know 17 years old. Yeah, I haven't seen it. <laughs> it's but, just, um... but that Evil Dead they made it as like a real scary horror movie, mm. and. I watch it a lot. Like I watch it as often as I watched the old Evil Dead's years ago. Yeah, of course um, I watched yeah. it for the the first one for the podcast last year, mm -hmm. and um, and then I you know I I just listened to the Evil Dead Two podcast. I I watched about half of it because it has been a really long time since I did it. I was just like trying to remind myself like exactly what the the texture of it is. Um, oh God, I've seen Evil. Well, I mean, I that was my favorite movie for a long time because it was stuck in my VCR in my room. I don't know if you remember that, but it, no, I, I barely need to watch it. Right. You know, yeah. I, 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 I've seen it that many times, but I did go I, it's when, been 20 years. It? So I would you know wanted to take a look at at least, you know, I, I, after an hour or I think it was 45 minutes. Like, OK, I got it. It's fine. You know, yeah. no, I, <laughs> I, I they played at the drive in. There was a horror film series, the Cine drive in last summer and um it was on a double feature with something 
and I stayed to watch Evil Dead too. I was like, okay, I've never, I've seen it in a theater, but I've never seen it like drive in. Yeah. So I've, an Army of Darkness, I've probably only seen like two or three times. I <laughs> Army of Darkness is like the usual illusion of Evil Dead movies for me. <laughs> it really just. I like it in concept. It's like it's like Jason the Argonauts. I'm like down with that, but it's like I don't really yeah. want to watch it. So yeah, I it's don't know. Just, I was like, I'm perfectly happy to listen to these people talk about it for two hours, but I didn't have any urge to go and actually revisit it. <laughs> yeah, it is not a horror movie, and um, again, it's so Bruce Campbell that Ash is just, you know, I'm over it. I've been over it, and uh, I I I do think that most of the Evil Dead fandom is. Of, of is really ash fandom mm. and there's a contingent of evil dead fandom small that actually just loves the mythology that's in yeah. it and loves it because it's gross and weird you know i i have i'm pretty firmly on the first one's better vibe now but <laughs> oh no that that i knew I, I when i i shifted from an evil dead 2 fan to an evil dead fan in my 20s but yeah ever since that 2013 um remake came out i'm just like this is evil yeah. dead like it really <laughs> it took it back to what i felt it should have always been which is like just, just, just fucked up horror yeah um what was it uh, oh yeah yeah since i had just listened to those i'm like i don't, don't want to do one of those ices on podcast on right so i was like okay bubba hotep so that, that's one of our monday movies <laughs> so because I, I was like a long time no, I saw it. I saw it opening weekend, right? Mm-hmm. And I was the age where I was coming in ready to see Ash, and that's totally not what you get in that movie. So I didn't that's like true. it. But now I'm like, I think that actually was a good movie. I just came in with absolutely the wrong expectations. So I'm like, let's revisit it. So, we're yeah, doing, we're doing that, and oh, and the original Tron because that's one of those ones. It's like we're 150 episodes in. It seems like we should have done the original Tron by now. <laughs> <laughs> I like Tron. I yeah, sold... that's what I'm saying. It seems like we should have done it by now. <laughs> yeah, when they, when Tron Legacy came out, um, the original Tron was out of print. And it was just like a brief time of a few months where it was. So I sold my double disc one that has the whole making of Tron disc, mm-hmm. which I honestly watched more than the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I sold that for pretty good cent on eBay. I got it in, in a Blu-ray duo. I, I guess that's when Legacy did come out. They packaged them together. Yeah, that yeah. did happen. I don't yeah. know if that has the making of or not. And honestly, I won't have time to watch that for Monday anyway. But uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then, it's um, great. then I'm doing the Twilight Zone with Mark and Terror Vision. <laughs> yeah. Is we Terror just, Vision on YouTube? Yeah, that's why. <laughs> we were just like looking at like playlists on YouTube of people that upload movies and like, what should we do here? Oh, Terror. Okay, Terror Vision. Why yeah, not? Yeah, because it's not on streaming. And Terror Vision, I actually, they, when they put out the, the Blu ray of it, I, I didn't catch it in time and it went out of print really quick. Uh, so I wanted to revisit TerraVision and I still haven't. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, when the podcast comes out, I, I, that's, I put the link in if it's on YouTube. So, but, uh, let's yeah. thing you find, like I found this caught, you know, like tons of old movies, you know, 50 sci-fi and, and monster movies and stuff. There's, there's like a, a playlist, like 20, like giant gorilla movies, none of which are King Kong. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> that is but I'm, great. Like, I, I'm never actually going to come in and have the time to just sit and watch these unless it's a podcast. Right. You know? So, <laughs> yeah, I just, I like, I like that now, you know, it is possible to just sort of have a bunch of movies play, Yeah, you know? And I, I hope I've lived in such a way that one of these days, you know, when I'm old, um, you know, they're like, well, um, we're all going shopping, Grandpa. We're going to leave this gorilla movie playlist on for you. I'll be like. <laughs> <laughs> that works. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's, you acquire crap. And it's like, oh, oh, you know, when I'm decrepit, I'll have time to get through all this. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I don't buy as much new movies as I used to because they're all in streaming. Uh, and you can just get the digital if you really love something. Um, but uh, as far as those boutique labels and stuff, I go in on a lot of that. No, um, I, I recently I've been just getting these D- DVD or Blu-ray TV sets in part because I don't like I, you know, I'm physically putting them in a player when I when I go to bed, which is why I keep falling asleep watching this stuff. But <laughs> oh, OK. Yeah. It's we, not like like it's not like I'm bored. I just like, yeah, just <laughs> no, I know I'm one thirty in the morning. I'm in bed. I t- like I 
What did I do? Oh, I finished a Voyager last night. Got through. I think I. No, no, I woke up and my light was still dimly on, and Voyager was still on the menu screen, so I must have crashed. <laughs> <laughs> so uh mimi doesn't uh care that the does she like the tv on when she sleeps actually her and hana share a room that's a that's kind of how it rolls in japan sometimes really yeah so i mean there's, that's... there's yeah i didn't know <laughs> that man so i basically like this is my room that she's working in there now i guess she's about to go to work but yeah yeah because um and it, it Especially till I go junior high, kids tend to sleep in the parents' room because the houses are smaller. It's an apartment or whatever, right? So yeah. But uh, I come home so late. Everyone's been in bed for an hour when I get home. So that makes total sense, man. That really does. So I'm doing it. Was it the Del Toro thing, right? <laughs> You've heard about that. Where he, he physically is like me and my wife get along fine, but I actually go to a house like a block away. That's my house. <laughs> 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 you know i mean that's that spells longevity i think you know the, the only flaw is for you have to wait till everyone's like out of the house or do it like you know like in like teenagers right so <laughs> <laughs> okay be real quiet <laughs> red light green light yeah so that that is i mean we'll think about japan they have the love hotels and stuff for that reason right okay i didn't put it together but <laughs> it's awesome <laughs> but no i think it was just last week it's like okay my dad's a, my dad's gonna be out of the house for the next 20 minutes <laughs> so yes I, that, that that that's how it's rolling for me now <laughs> all right dude <laughs> It's fine though. <laughs> I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing. No, I get it. No, it's, just, it's, a, funny, it's, it's a funny situation for us. It is. Yeah, I didn't realize. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's kind of awesome. Uh, no, it, it it's practical. Like it, I get it. it. It is practical, yes. But yeah, <laughs> that's how it rolls. So um, it's like there's a season because winter time there's no time, and then summer hey there's only time. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. my um my in laws also live here but starting about now until probably about the end of october they get up at like six in the morning they're out of the house at like seven they go to the family house and like farm all day so ah yeah. okay <laughs> but uh that's yeah, cool. yeah. yeah i guess we never talked about it, but that's i didn't i didn't know that was a it, it makes so much sense honestly yeah you know? that's why it's run up like on mondays i, I since maybe it's teleworking i go to the family house take a bunch of instruments and you know make noise all day even if they were farming it didn't matter because it's in the countryside and they're farming right so yeah and, and i'm not blasting electric guitar it's like an acoustic guitar or a cello right so <laughs> still that's pretty awesome because that's but, uh, that's like i think the thing is time to yourself um you know in in the in the single family dwelling you know it's just it's tough yeah it's like we have this big old house to escape to as well so <laughs> So I, like I, here. I, it's not like a lack of space or anything, you know? Oh yeah. No, see here I was, I was watching super eight movies and so in, in uh eight millimeter. And so like, you know, I haven't brought the drums in yet because, you know, I got the projector set up. Right. Right. So it's like, it would be rad just to go to have the music stuff, you know, someone didn't set them up. Like That's where I keep, yeah, I keep the synthesizer at the other house. So and so i know you've seen my tatami room set up right this is a, mm -hmm. I think yeah it's like yeah so that's cool. like when i when i have several days i'll I'll make that set up but <laughs> which is you know I, hell that's a proper studio isn't it at that point no yeah <laughs> totally no i that is great i uh, just don't yeah because i use this as a studio and the green screens back there too it's like it's never one thing for very long oh yeah i, I have to lug those synthesizers like across the house to make that set up and yeah mo mogs the mogs are not light <laughs> i don't think i've ever moved one the, the juno's not too bad but the moog is yeah real heavy <laughs> mm. so okay i'm gonna hit it and go to work then so i'll catch right, you in the laters word up ending the recording or the meeting well in the recording i should do both